But now to the latest on the Trump transition. Just moments ago, President-elect Trump announcing he'll nominate Dr. Ben Carson as Secretary of Housing and Urban Development as we learn about new contenders for Secretary of State. ABC's John Carl is here. He's got all the details for us. Good morning, John. Good morning, Robin. President-elect Trump says he plans to name almost all of his big-name cabinet nominees by the end of the week, although the list of contenders for the most high-profile pick of all appears to be growing. The Trump transition team now says the president-elect is considering as many as nine candidates for secretary of state. They're the candidates we already knew about, and now there are new names, including Rex Tillerson, the CEO of ExxonMobil, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, John Huntsman, the former ambassador to China appointed by President Obama, and even retired Admiral James Stavridis, who was on Hillary Clinton's shortlist for VP. We've got a president here in Donald Trump that wants to look at the best and brightest of America, regardless of background, regardless of past disputes that we may have had with each other. Whoever gets the job will have to deal with a growing controversy with China over President-elect Trump's decision to take a phone call from the president of Taiwan. Taiwan is officially a part of China and not an independent country. And for four decades, U.S. presidents have respected that by avoiding direct contact with the Taiwanese president. President Obama can, can reach out uh, to a murdering dictator in, in Cuba in the last year uh, and be hailed as a hero for doing it. And uh, president-elect Donald Trump takes a courtesy call from the democratically elected leader in Taiwan, and it's become, it's become something of a controversy. But Trump continued to go after China over the weekend on Twitter, tweeting, did China ask us if it was okay to devalue their currency, making it hard for our companies to compete? Trump also used Twitter over the weekend to lash out at companies who move jobs out of the country, and even to slam Saturday Night Live as unwatchable. I mean, wow, what a great... Smart tweet. Meanwhile, on 60 Minutes, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan said the president-elect's Twitter tirades don't bother him at all. And who cares what he tweeted, you know, on some Thursday night if we fix this country's big problems? That's just the way I look at this. And Ryan, who, of course, has clashed mightily with Trump in the past, says he talks to him all the time. George and Robin, what he says is he just calls him up on his cell phone. Okay. In the meantime, John, they, they're also working on that agenda to, to take on right in January. And there do seem to be some differences over exactly how to handle health care, even taxes. Yeah, no question. There's differences with the team. And, and you see the differences play out in terms of the policies they're going to do. And I think that's what's going on with this expanding list for Secretary of State. Genuine divisions on his team about what direction to go. But to go from four to possibly nine? <laughs> Hey, you know, it works for The Apprentice. You know, you got to, you know, you start big and you narrow it down. I mean, I set you up let's talk to Martha that. Raddatz about that, our chief global affairs correspondent. And, and Martha, this is a, a pretty eclectic list that, that continues to grow. And I guess you could interpret that as bad news for the ones who are already on it. Well, I guess you could, George. I mean, it is a growing list. You've got Admiral Stavridis there. He has a lot of NATO experience. Again, calling on those military officers, generals, admirals as part of these lists. But I think you will see him probably go back over the original list as well and, and maybe Mitt Romney again. We'll see. It could be a week or two away. Uh, meantime, Martha, this, this phone call uh, to, to, Ch to the Taiwanese president uh, over the weekend, you saw Mike Pence yesterday on this. We kind of downplay this. But this was a deliberate strategy by the Trump team. You know, any call to or from a president-elect is a big deal, especially when that phone line has been quiet for decades. On the other hand, it can be seen as a way to send a message to China with a bit of cover. Since Donald Trump has not yet taken office, Mike Pence can easily say that this, this doesn't mean there's a shift in policy, and yet this puts China on notice that things may not be the same under a Trump presidency. Starts to shake things up a bit. Okay, Martha Reddis, thanks very much.